Good morning, church family. My name is Richard, and we are continuing in our study of Matthew. And today, um, the passage of Scripture that is a part of our devotion is Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And what I want to do is I just want to read them to you. It's a it's very um, clear what God, Jesus is saying in this passage, but I want to read it and just give you a few quick thoughts this morning on it. And then may we pray and then hopefully just live this out in our day today. So here's what it says. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. It says, you are the light of the world, a town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is a passage that's coming right after the Beatitudes. And uh, man, this is the Beatitudes are the first part of the Sermon on the Mount, one of Jesus' most famous sermons. And the Beatitudes, ultimately, they reveal key character traits that God approves in his people. These, these are character traits that are gracious gifts that God gives to us indicating his approval. These aren't requirements to, these things don't get us into heaven or merit God's approval. Remember, because of what Jesus did did for us, that merits our approval for God that sets us right with God. But a life that has met Christ, that has repented and turned and started to walk with him and surrendered to him, God then through the Holy Spirit will begin to start to transform your life and shape you into a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And so I'm not going to go back and read the Beatitudes, but I encourage you to go back and read them. But there's something that it points out today that he says this, that you are the light of the world. Light is used all throughout scripture. This imagery, it represents good. It represents righteous. um, It even represents belief. But Jesus is making a statement of who you are. I want you to stop and think about that for a second. Oftentimes we read through scripture fast, but it doesn't say, hey, you need to try to be light. Even in the verse before it, um, it talks about you are salt. Like, think about that for a second. This is who you are. This is not an identity that you're trying to achieve. Oh, I've got to be light. It's not something that you're trying to produce in yourself. Oh, I've got to be light. No, if you are a follower of Jesus, This is a statement, identity statement of who you already are. And instead of trying to achieve that through tight knuckle grip, trying to earn God's favor, no, it's learning to rest in the spirit of God and walk with him and become who you are and who he says you are through walking and abiding with him. You are light. It's bestowed on you. That's what he's given you. And this light you is, is your whole existence. Since you are light, here's what he's saying. Like you have been set a, a, as a city on a hill up to be displayed to the world. Something that cannot be hidden. Your Christian life, your walk with Jesus is not something to be done in secret. It is to be displayed for the world to See, You see, a community or a group of people of Jesus that seeks to hide itself ultimately ceases to follow him. But when you choose to follow Jesus and walk with him, your life will be on display. The righteous works, your good works will be set aside and God is going to place you as a means that is going to draw people to see you. But the real question is, what are you going to do when the eyes are on you? Are you going to revel in the glory of look how awesome I am? I am such a great Christian. I am, I, am one, I am one to be worshiped. Or will you let that light be a reflection and pointing in your good deeds, pointing to the very one who has allowed you to be forgiven of sin, to walk in this newness of light, and is the one who is transforming you and helping you walk this new way of life out letting your light shine before others you need to just get a grip with this in this kingdom 
the life you live is a very public life. Life is not hidden. I mean, think about it. Salt is ineffective unless it comes in contact with what it's either flavoring or preserving. And it's the same with light. Light is effective when it is on display, not hidden. And our citizen in the citizenship in the kingdom of God is will not only transform us, but as we allow God to work through us and shine through us, it will also be a part of transforming the world in the life of other people. You see, we can't live this life and this Christian life with fear or hesitation. A disciple, I wrote, I've got some notes here. It says, a disciple without good works is just like salt that has lost its taste or as ridiculous as an oil lamp that's hidden under a basket. Citizens of the kingdom influence people through their resemblance to their king of their kingdom, thereby bringing him greater glory. And then listen to this. As salt and light, Jesus' disciples must, one, listen to this, we must engage with the world. We've got to. We've got to come in contact with the world. We can't, like, remove ourselves from the world. No, this is not our home, but this is a place where we are supposed to engage with our life. We're supposed to push back on darkness. We're supposed to push back on evil. We are supposed to live differently, bringing out God's colors and flavors in this world and keeping uh, this world from decay and rot as sin tries to do that. But as light, here's what we need to know. We must never allow their engagement or engagement with the world to lead to compromise of the kingdom's values and God's word in our life. Jesus perfectly and harmoniously models both salt and light. And if you and I will stay connected to the vine, as it talks about in the book of John, God will begin to work this out in your life and our life. And in in the spaces that we enter, whether it is work, whether it's with family or friends, God will allow us to be who he says we are, salt and light, living it out. What? Bringing glory and pointing people to our great king. I want to close with just one quote, and it's by... um, Uh, a pastor and a theologian and and a great writer. His name is Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. And listen to what he says, and this is my prayer for you and me. As we read God's Word and we read the book of Matthew and we start to let the words of Jesus not just come into our mind and not just give us a lot of head knowledge, but we would have this lived out theology or the praxis in our life. Here's what he says. The world today is looking for and desperately needs true Christians. I am tired of saying that what the church needs to do is not organize a new evangelistic campaign or put on something else to attract outside people, but to begin herself to live the Christian life. Brother or sister, walk with Jesus today. Rest in who you are that Jesus has given us salt and light, and may we shine bright for the glory of God today. Have a great day, church.